Want to learn engineering and science? Well, you've tuned in to the right channel. Hit subscribe and press the bell icon and never miss an update from us. Hey guys, what's up? This is your friend and tutor Manas. And today, we'll begin with part 3 of this lecture series on shear forces and bending moments. Well, before getting into the definition and details of beams, let me take you to a construction site and I'll try to make you familiar with some common terminology. Okay, now listen to this very carefully. This picture in front of you is a structure and it essentially is a combination of different key elements. Well, we have a key element in the form of a beam. Well, to start off or to be very blunt, beam is basically a horizontal member whose responsibility is to withstand the load by resisting bending. Now, then there is um, another key element in the form of a column. So what's a column? It's a compression member and is a structural element that transmits through compression the weight of the structure above to other structural elements below. For example, if you're living in a multi-storied building, say you're living on the third floor. So the responsibility of a column is to transfer the load from third floor to the second floor and then from second floor to the first floor and then first floor to the ground floor. That's it. That's exactly what a column does. It transfers the load from the floor above to the floor below by resisting compression. Now, the third key element is what you call a slab. Okay, so what exactly is a slab? It's a flat piece of concrete and it serves as a walking surface, but it may also serve as a load bearing member. And there are many more other key elements as well. Now, if we were to focus on beams in particular, okay, it is a structural element that is capable of withstanding load primarily by resisting bending. I've already said that. Now, the bending force that gets into the material of the beam may depend on a variety of factors. It may be because of external loads, then it may be because of its own weight. It may be because of the span. By span, I mean to say the length of the beam itself, because if the length is more, then obviously the chances of bending are pretty high and also the external reactions. Now, all these factors develop something that we refer to as bending moments. And if you are a civil engineer or a mechanical engineer, then you know very well what a bending moment is. Okay. At different cross sections of the beam, the value of bending moment varies and thus gives us a very clear indication as to where the maximum bending occurs so that you can provide reinforcements. So let's further get into the details of what exactly is a beam. Okay. I've written down some points and I'm going to read them out one by one. Point number one. A beam is a structural element that primarily resists loads applied laterally to the beam's axis. Okay, what does that mean? So here is a beam and you can clearly see one end of which is pinned or hinged while the other end is roller supported. Okay, now if we can have the axis, yeah, here it is. This yellow colored dash dot line that you see represents the axis of the beam. And if you watch carefully, the angle that this load makes with this axis is 90 degrees. So that's exactly what lateral means. So whenever you speak of a beam, the loads will be lateral in nature. So that's one of the conditions of calling a structural member a beam. Okay. Now the second thing is the mode of deflection is primarily by bending. Okay. Now what happens if this beam bends due to this load? Okay. The, and the axis would be some sort of this nature. You can see that along different points of the beam, we have different sorts of deflections. Now all of this can be calculated. Now, what I'm trying to say is that there is a limit to which the deflection can occur or you can know this there is a maximum allowable deflection for any beam. Now let's say this beam is having a span length of uh, 6 meters. So There is a formula. I think you should know this. The maximum allowable deflection is equal to span in millimeters divided by 3000. So the span in this case is 3 plus 3 that is 6 meters if you convert that in millimeters, you can get the value as 6,000 millimeters. And when that is divided by 300, you'll get the maximum allowable deflection as 20 millimeters. Okay. So it cannot be more than that. Always remember this. Okay, fine. Let's move forward. The loads applied to the beam result in reaction forces at the beam's support points. Okay. So due to this load, there are going to be reactions at point A and at point B, obviously. Next point, the total effect of all the forces acting on the beam is to produce shear forces 
and bending moments within the beam that in turn induce internal stresses strains and deflections of the beam obviously now because of all of this loading because of this um, reactions there are going to be shear forces set up across the length of the beam and also bending moments okay something we call shear forces and bending moment diagram which really helps us in determining which portion is weak and which portion is strong and that's how you can apply the reinforcements and then finally we have this point beams are characterized by the manner of support okay now you can clearly see um both the ends are supported it's a simply supported beam okay and i'm going to be discussing that in detail um in just a few seconds all right and then we have the profile shape of cross section length and the material what exactly i mean to say by the profile is this now this cross section is of i shape and hence the name of the beam is i beam this is a c beam this is an l beam and different sorts of beams are available now civil engineers have to deal with all these kinds of stuff in what they call as steel tables okay selection of different types of beams for different purposes and for different sorts of loadings okay so now let's take a look at the types of beams all right now depending upon the type of support the beams have been classified as follows let's have a look now this is the first type okay now if you watch carefully now when both these supports of the beam are roller supports or one support is roller and the other hinged the beam is known as a simply supported beam all right now let's have a look at another one here it is if you watch carefully this is what you call an overhanging beam the definition says that if the length of the beam extend beyond the supports that is beyond point b since b is a support so beyond point b there is this length this is what you call an overhang and beyond point a that is towards the left of a again we have an overhang and this essentially is what you call an overhanging beam right now let's take a look at another one all right so this is essentially what you refer to as a cantilever beam so when you speak of a cantilever beam it's one end is fixed and the other end is free okay now there is going to be a vertical reaction and a moment at the fixin now this is also this moment in fact is also known as the fixing moment all right now let's move forward now this is going to be another one this is what you call a fixed beam all right the definition is pretty simple both the ends of the beam are fixed and that's why we refer to this as a fixed beam and finally we have this one and if you watch carefully the number of supports is more than 2 so if the number of supports is more than 2 we call that beam as a continuous beam that's it so guys that was all from my side for today i'll see you in part 4 and don't even think of missing out on part 4 as it's extremely important and there i'm going to be discussing the concept of shear forces and bending moments with respect to beams and i'll tell you how the shear forces and bending moment diagrams are made what is their physical relevance and all these kinds of stuff i'm going to be discussing in part 4 extremely important Thank you for watching this video. Have a nice day. Take care.